an award like this, obviously a very prestigious and, and high profile award, is um, incredible because our subject is very often belittled. It's very often the last on the list of um, subjects that gets attention. Um, so, to, so to put primary health care, safety of primary health care, at the, at the top of the agenda for once is, um, is very rewarding and very encouraging for us uh, uh, as a team. Well, for, to answer that question first, from our viewpoint, um, every time we hit a barrier, we have to innovate around it. Um, it's not, uh, it, our, our modus operandi isn't really to fight big industry, it isn't to fight ministers of health, it isn't to fight cultures which aren't ours, which we don't belong to. We obviously uh, find it much more efficient to try and innovate a way for us to make progress. Um, so given a situation where a minister doesn't want to meet uh, me, for example, we will try every which way. We won't sit in reception maybe for, for three or four days. That wouldn't be our, our uh, way of handling it. But um, we would find other ways of, of making that introduction and getting in front of that person. Um, and as far as the second part of the question, how important is it, is it for society? It's essential. We, we cannot... Um, first of all, it's integral within us to innovate, um, but also there are, there are so many um, issues out there that need innovation to solve them. However, what I am really fascinated with is how we go about that. I think the process of innovation is, if I have the right to say it, quite staid. I think it's quite formulaic and it needs to change. I think we have to think completely differently about how the, the results and the products of innovation are applied to the world. I think uh, running them on a commercial competitive basis has had its day and we need to rethink that. If, if the organisation has that role, of course, you know, they, you have to have that driven from the top, I think. You have to have that driven from uh, the, the boss who mustn't punish failure, mustn't punish wild thinking um, in any way and, and must encourage that and, and failure is obviously good. Um, so I think that if the organisation has that as one of its ways forward, then it has to make that a top priority. But there are many that don't need innovation. There are many that don't need to um, have that. And so therefore the, the person who is trying to innovate with one, within an organization like that is probably you know, wasting his energy and needs to, needs to go somewhere else. That's a very good, tricky question. <laughs> um, the, the fact is that that made me look at things a little bit differently. I'm not sure I. Um, I'm not sure I acquired along the way. I think they were in me. Uh, I can remember what some of my first memories were. Looking up at the stars and wondering, did we come from there? Why are we here? What you know? So I was always very inquiring from from the very beginning. I'm not saying that made me good at what I do. <laughs> I'm just saying that I was in that frame of mind all along. And I always wanted to, um, to take on challenges um, and to ask maybe the most awkward question that, that one could. And whether there was an answer or not, I think it's worth asking that question. Ah, well, I've been thinking about this for, for a while now. I, I think whether it's, whether it's decade or um, five decades or a, a century, I think probably the biggest innovation is, is going to be in this, the, first of all, for what we've got now and what we're going to see in the future. I think the biggest innovation for us um, was putting satellites up in, in the atmosphere for us to speed up communications. I think that was something innately required by human beings to be able to communicate faster. I think in the future, the biggest innovation um, is going to be space travel. I think putting world leaders um, in a, in a very unusual situation of looking down on our planet rather than looking out on our planet is, is going to cause a fundamental shift in humanity. Because I think it will, that separateness of being able to take people away from greed, politics, commerce, um, you know, subjugation, hierarchies, all the other things that are really 
um, ingrained in society, taking world leaders, people who can have influence away from situations completely and giving them a view of, of the, the earth um, from that viewpoint, I think we'll have a fundamental change on us in the future. I'm, I'm certain it'll get, it'll get faster. It'll get, you know, unbelievably um, common innovation. But as, as I framed before, I think it's, it's very dangerous that, that we follow the same rote system for... Um, Generating innovation, procuring innovation, and delivering it. I think that those are problem are going to be problematic, because the the way the world is set up, it cannot absorb more without a bun fight. It cannot absorb more without without that commercial uh, fighting. And for me, the future is going to be a different methodology of delivering innovation. Open sourcing, for example, I think is going to be absolutely vital. Um, in the future and to allow um, the, the secrets and the non-transparency to be blown away because I, the, the innovation that we enjoy now with you know, telecommunications and mobile phones and films and whatever else we, that touch us on a, millions of times a day um, has done a really good job of putting us in the mess we're in right now and that's, that's fine but I think we need to innovate the innovation.